On this episode of Street Rat Garage, we're going to have a look at the 1972 Ford Maverick from Roadkill, known as Goose. It's hot. So if you are a Roadkill fan, you will have seen this car in Season 8, Episode 95, Cheap Beater Battle. And it was also in Trading Cars Across Power Tour, The Ultimate Road Trip. That was Season 8, Episode 97. That's just uh, two episodes after the uh, Cheap Beater Battle. So what happened in the Cheap Beater Battle is they took four cheap cars, uh, Goose here, a 1972 Ford Maverick, a Crown Vic, a Chevy Love pickup truck, and a GMC S15 pickup truck. And they battled, battled them out in all sorts of wacky car-related things, contests. Well, Goose right here wound up being the overall winner of that epic battle. Two episodes after that, they did uh, 2019 Hot Rod Power Tour, where they brought Goose all the way from California to, I think it was Bristol, Tennessee, and they traded cars every day for the remainder of Power Tour. So they traded Goose for a, a pickup truck that had no bed on it, and they traded that for, what they trade that for? They traded that for Fiero, they traded the Fiero for a 63 Belvedere, 63 Belvedere for a Mustang GT. So. The owner of this, the owner of it that swapped for the uh, bed, the truck with no bed, his name was Milo. So Milo lived uh, down there in Tennessee and he put the car up for sale. I saw it and I said, Milo, I gotta have that car. Went and met Milo and we bought Old Goose here and it's been a member of Street Rat Garage ever since uh, with no real plans of ever selling it, hopefully, unless. Uh, Know, another really great roadkill car comes along. We put quite a bit of money, well not quite a bit of money, we put some money into Goose trying to get him uh, a little bit faster. So when I got Goose here, he wasn't running great. I mean, Dave and Mike, they really did a number on this car. Uh, there was you know major, major burnouts and uh, power slides and dirt racing and it was, it was a mess. They, they put this car through its paces, but it survived. Like I said before, it won. So it beat all those other cars out, being the best beater in that battle. But there were definitely still some issues that need to be ironed out. When Milo got this car, it was overheating pretty bad. It had the stock radiator in it and probably full of garbage and what have you. He put a aluminum radiator in there. Uh, I think he put a fuel regulator in there. A couple of other things, changed the fuel pump. This had, I think it had a clicky clack fuel pump in it at the time, and I can't remember. But upgraded the fuel pump, uh, changed out, put the aluminum radiator in it, you know, got her cleaned up a little bit. Definitely did some improvements, but still lacking in the power department. So when I picked this car up from Milo, he gave me some time slips. He had taken it out to the local drag strip and shot off, I think, uh, some 16 seconds, higher 16 second quarter mile times, and it, it just wasn't doing good. There was uh, there was still some issues that needed to be worked out. I'll bring you in here. We'll have a look at the engine compartment, and we can show you a couple of, couple of those things that we, we did to improve it a little bit. Now... There was not a whole lot of information on this engine when it was uh, brought to Tennessee and traded to Milo. All that we really know is it's a 302. Uh, Milo ran the numbers. It is a 72 302, but not from this car, from something else rebuilt and put in here. Uh, so we got, we got the HEI style distributor, which was already in here. Uh, Milo added the regulator right there. 
uh, I have already changed out the carburetor, uh, but Milo added this aluminum radiator, which definitely helped out with the electric fan. So that kind of really helped. It's still getting a little bit hot, but I believe it's right here in this um, temperature sensor. If you can see this temperature sensor, see how loose that is. I don't think it's working properly, uh, so it's really loose and I think that's not letting it get the proper, turning on at the proper temperature and cooling the car. But as long as it's going down the road, it's fine. Uh, just when we stop and idle for about five or six minutes, the temperature starts to climb. Now, as far as what I have done to the car, as I changed out the carburetor, that was one of the first things I did. Actually, one of the first things I did was take it to the track and I could only, uh, I could only pull like a 16 out of it myself. And uh, I took the carburetor off and there was all a bunch of gunk in the fuel bowls. I changed the carburetor. It had like one of those aluminum carburetors on it, like the cheapest one you can, you can get from Holly, like a 600, and the back bowls was not working. So we, I cleaned that up, got the back squirters going, and it definitely improved the car. Uh, I think we were running low 15s with it at that point. So what I did is I wound up changing this carburetor out. Uh, but you know, before we did that, we had the 700, no, the 600, 600 CFM aluminum carburetor from Holly, one of the cheapest ones that you can buy. So that was on here, took it, ran it at the track. Uh, the car was running like 16s or something like that. And yeah, not good. But we put the 700 on here and uh, it definitely pumped things up. And that definitely made quite the difference in performance. The other carburetor, I mean, the back bowls weren't working. We cleaned them up. I mean, it definitely did better, but not, not enough carburetor. This one, definitely, hands down, a better carburetor. Now, that still was not good enough. And maybe you noticed while we were looking at the carburetor, this little solenoid here, and this little solenoid down here. You know what that means? Yes, we added nitrous to it. Uh, two, what was I running? A 150, a 150 shot. So it's adjustable from 75 to 250 shot. Uh, the NX, NS, NXX, in what is it? I can't remember the, you know, the one nitrous express. There you go. The nitrous express kit. And, uh, you know, that's uh, the one solenoid. Seems a little loose right there. So. Yeah, maybe it's just a line. I don't know. Anyway, we'll look at that too. That one's tight. Uh, anyway, getting off track, where were we? So <laughs> we added nitrous. We took it out to Arizona for the duct tape drags. I hit it with that 250 shot and bam, it took off like nobody's business. It ran in the 13s. It ran like 13.4 right in there, mid 13s. Now, being out in Arizona, you're up there in elevation. So um, we brought it back. Was pretty happy with, you know, the 13 from a 14.5 to a 13, dropped the second off of it. But knew it could do a little bit better. Brought it back to Indy, set the timing a little bit better because in Arizona, just set it by ear because the timing marks were, they were hidden down in there, so. Definitely having problems looking at the timing, so we, we guessed at the timing. Retarded it enough to be safe for the nitrous, but got it back to Indy, bumped up the timing a little bit, still in, in the safe zone, wound up running a 12, a mid 12, so we dropped two seconds off, you know, the 14 with the 700 carburetor. So definitely nitrous for the win. Now we could just be happy running a 12, five ish, in the quarter mile, but I don't think so. We are having some hookup problems with Goose. Really have to baby it out of the hole. Goose does not have wide tires on the back. We did run drag radios about an eight inch wide tire on there, but there is somewhere it will hop when we get on it pretty hard. So there are some traction bars that I have bought. They're in the box and before we take it out to the track next time, we'll try to get those on. It also has a stock gear in it, so probably it's got a stock eight inch. 
It does have a um, mini spool in it, so we got both wheels turning, but still the stock gear, so we're probably 273 gears in the rear end. 308s maybe, it had a six cylinder in it, so best is probably, you know, the low threes on that. We're gonna bump up the gears. We're gonna put the traction bars on it. We're gonna leave the eight inch in it for right now until, you know, something happens. And we don't have a stall. Actually, we do have a stall. It's in a box on a shelf. We need to put that in as well. So we got the stock stall. We got the stock gears, uh, skinny tires. With that combination, new gears, new, new uh, spool and traction bars, maybe we can get a high 11 out of it. Hoping for that. And we still have another 50 shot that we can go on the nitrous. Maybe we can get an 11.5 out of it at that. If we can get an 11.5, totally happy. But let's continue the walk around of Goose. This being a California car, you would think it would be like just absolutely rust free, you know, not so much. Uh, a lot of cars from California, when they come from uh, near the ocean, they have rust. And this is no exception. So even though this car did come from California, we don't know if it lived its whole life in California, if it was right by the sea, but there, there's Bondo and, there, and there's rust right there in the corner of the doors. So the fenders seem to be pretty good shape. So we got rust here. We're starting to bubble here, so we get, probably got Bondo in here and maybe a little bit in there. We're breaking out right there as well, so there was a dent there that somebody beat out. On this other side, yeah, we definitely have some issues. Now, if you have ever seen somebody like myself do foam, spray-in foam insulation. This is what happens when you use spray-in foam insulation to do body work. This is all is about to pop out. That spray-in foam sucks in that water and just rots the car. So we got spray-in foam rotting the car. We probably got some more there. So one day something will have to be done, but this car stays inside all of the time and doesn't get driven in the Midwest winters here. But yeah, besides that, we got some there too. Overall, it's not, it's not awful. It's not an awful car. Now, if you look here, this paint is kind of shiny right here and it's kind of dull right here. Well, I took a buffer to this right here and it winds, uh, wound up being that this is just spray paint sitting on top of uh, the factory good paint. So when somebody built this car, put all the Bondo, put all the spray foam, they went ahead and rattle can this entire car for a fake patina look. And uh, <laughs> they actually did a pretty good job. I did not know that was like that and that this was just spray until I hit it with the buffer. So. We're gonna leave it alone. We're not gonna buff this car out. Um, so you can see a little bit right here. I did hit it right here, but just spray some gray, some white, some silver, and it gives you an old rusty car look. Now, if you look here, you will notice four bolt pattern, meaning this was an original six cylinder car. I don't know exactly how long they did this because in the big bumper car days, 73 and up, uh, I don't know when, in, you know, after 73, they put five lugs on all of them, whether it was a six cylinder or the V8 car. But at least in the 72 and down, I know that if it had four cylinder, if it had four lug nuts on it, then it had the inline six. The V8 had the five lugs, you know, kind of like the Mustang. So eight inch, four lug rear end, still pulling mid 12s, hasn't broke. Of course, we come soft out of the hole, but it doesn't matter because we have another Maverick that has a Versailles nine inch in it. And 
as soon as we destroy this one, then it gets the nine inch that has disc brakes on it. And we will be taking the disc brakes off of the front of the other Maverick and converting this all over to five lugs. Now we can jump inside and have a look at the interior. This is the seat. And as you can see, it has a big hole in it, but that's okay because somebody cut out some foam probably from their couch or a couch that was laying alongside the road and you know now it's got a cover on it and that solves that problem of course the back seat area like most cars nice the carpet was tan it's turning green the back door panels they're all good you know for a daily driver it's uh it's not a bad interior it's all it's all good it's all usable nothing nothing awful there there is absolutely nothing special going on inside of this car this one i don't know when again but there's no glove box the parts car has a glove box so it has a tray you want to keep your stuff you put it in the tray so it has a pretty decent dash has a couple cracks in it has a uh, electrical tape on the horn button we got some cheapy gauges we got our homegrown nitrous switch we got the bottle warmer we got the purge and we got the arm arm button it has a micro switch on the uh, throttle so that's how we that's how we operate that probably ought to do a little bit better job but you know roadkill uh, it's got nice door panels on it yeah that's about it that's the rest of it's the rest of it's awful now for the most important thing how does it drive well let's find out so old goose runs exactly how you would expect a 1972 ford maverick with a 302 v8 swap to run okay i mean it's old technology it still has the um that weird piston thing for the power steering you know what i mean the power steering just runs through like this piston that helps uh turn the wheels i don't know what I don't know what that's called. What is that system called? I am, I'm so not a Ford guy, really. Uh, this is this is the only Ford I have. I think this is the only. No, we have the Mustang. We got two Fords. That's it. So yeah, it has antiquated steering. It's a little bit sloppy on the road, but not bad. It'll do, you know, 100 miles an hour on the uh, through the traps without any issues at all. But you can still feel it. I mean, basically, it runs like an old 60s Mustang. That's probably the best to describe it. It shifts fine sometimes. Uh, it hangs a little long going into third gear, but we don't have the proper shift linkage on the carburetor. When I bought the carburetor, it didn't have the, that little Ford arm thingy on it. So uh, we're having to downshift and what have you by hand. So there is that issue. We'll get another car for it and get that stuck on it later it doesn't it doesn't hurt anything we're fine but the one problem that we do have is there's some hesitation on takeoff so let's come to a complete stop and we'll just gun it or goose it did you hear that try that again just come to a complete stop we'll give it a little rpms here that wasn't all the way into it but you can still hear the hesitation in that so we probably need some more carburetor some more what do you call that squirter so definitely gonna have to get that fixed up and that's that's gonna help our reaction time definitely get us out of the hole but as far as running and driving I mean we're we're at like 180 right now uh, just driving down the road I don't know if the fans are kicked in not today's today's not a real hot day so it may be fine, but 
It's just when we uh, when we come and idle for a long period of time, three, four, five minutes, then it starts to creep up in temperature. But besides that, everything else is fine. So that's going to wrap it up for the walk around of Goose, our 1971 Roadkill Maverick. Next episode, we're going to Roadkill Nights up in Pontiac, Michigan. So make sure to look for that video. And if you're watching this before Roadkill Nights, Goose will be there in the car corral in the car show area. So stop by, say hi, have a look at Goose and the rest of the Roadkill vehicles that will be up there. So that's it for this episode of Street Rack Garage. Until next time.